So the class here will be Okamase style. Okay. So you don't know what's gonna happen and what I'm gonna teach. And today I have a good mood to teach about the <laughs> reinforced concrete cross section mechanics. Anyway, all right. So the fish I'm gonna offer you today, well, one difference between Okamase and and our class is that Okamase is gonna charge you quite very expensively. But for this class, it is a free class. So, uh, well, the only thing that costs you is just the nice winter breeze sleeping that is interrupted by the course in the morning. Um, so we, we will talk about the fundamental of uh, reinforced concrete uh, mechanics. Basically I think this is going to be useful for you because uh, ultimately we'll be able to develop the moment curvature response rela relationships for the RC cross section. And uh, the assumption for the use of the uh, Whitney stress block, uh, it is quite limited in many cases. For example, if you want to design the structural wall uh, or the cases that you have the pre-stress sometimes, uh, you end up with some trouble. Uh, something like this. When you deal with the shear wall or structural wall, uh, when you learn the Whitney stress block, you you have the stress block just over here, right? Uh, so that what 0 0.85 beta is something I I, I don't I, I just have just a very little memory about that because I no longer use it after my graduations and after I learned about the a uh, concrete, a proper concrete model. I, I, I just delete that memory out of my brain because it is just, well, to me, it is sort of useless. I don't like it. So, well, this assumption, your neutral axis has to be here and then you can simplify the stress block. Okay, so it will be given by, I think, yeah, 0 0.85 F prime C. Oh, one thing, eh? I think in Thailand, we call a lot of, many of us call it FC prime. I don't know who is the first one in Thailand who call FC prime. But when I had the uh, education in the US, nobody called FC prime. Everybody called F prime C. So this is like sort of annoying every time I, I hear anybody call FC prime, FC prime. I said, no, it is F prime C. Well, just a minor detail, and then this is what? This is the A, right? Okay, and, and you got to look f up for the A values. Uh, for one concrete strand, uh, you might end up with a different because the A value will be varying from one number to, okay, just forget about it. We're not gonna use all this thing, right? So, the point is that what if your curvature or your strain distribution look like this. For example, you have the wall. For the wall, you are carrying axial load and then you might not even have the neutral axis in your cross section. It fall out, it fell over here. So, so this is the first uh, sort of like motivation for me to, to abandon uh, the idea of the Whitney stress block because if I just continue using Whitney stress block the case like this is not applicable. So what? Uh, if the Whitney stress block is going to come down to here right? because this, this, this might be the imaginary neutral axis it might come down to here so okay let's say the A is going to be out to here so what? So are you going to like cut it out here and then okay just discard this because your cross section extends just from here to here and what? And then you are going to say that your stress is uniform? Huh? 
witness stress block gives you the 0.85 f prime z uniform, but you have moment in here. How would this be picking up the information from the real cross section mechanics? The thing is that the proper concrete model is available. Since around that time, 1980s or a little bit before, Park and Ken, Scott Park Priestley, Mander Priestley, okay, there are many concrete models uh, which are proposed for a very long time. So it is like older than me now. The model is like 40 years. But back at that time, you don't have the PC. You can hardly use, well, you, you are, people are still using the slide rules in that time. They, they have no calculator. So it makes perfect sense that Whitney come up with the Whitney stress block to simplify the cross-sectional analysis for RC member. But we are in the 2020 now, in a few days from now. So we can write up the program, even just Microsoft Excel, that is good enough. And from that, we can ties up everything and come up with the actual uh, concrete model used for your cross-sectional analysis. And using just Whitney's stress block, what you end up with is just the moment capacity, nominal moment capacity, MN. So you have no idea about the ductility. Well, you might have some, some, just some idea, because you can check the tensile strain of the steel and see how much it undergo. Is it yielding? If it's not yielding, you, re you reach to the concrete crutching before, then that is the brittle failure. And, and we will not design the structure. We, we generally don't want to design structure in that, for that state. But if you really design and it cannot be done in a better way, then your, uh, your, your cross-section is a compression control cross-section, and then your strength reduction factor, which is not 0 0.9, will be applied to your cross-section. Well, basically, it is 0 0.65. But in reality, you can design the compression control cross-section. But the thing is that the discount that comes from your fee factor it reduced more than 0 0.9, it reduced down to 0 0.65, so you may not like that. But it, it still satisfies the requirement by the court, because the court said that, okay, if the failure is detrimental, then give it a bigger room for the safety. Yeah, all right? But yes, you, you, you just get the capacity, which is, uh, we understand that it is the ultimate capacity. We, we get just a rough idea about ductility because you just know the ultimate tensile strain in the tensile reinforcement. But the thing is that you don't have the overall behavior of your RC cross-section, which is, uh, well, you are sort of blind without knowing that. So uh, the the use of the proper concrete model will enable us to see the moment curvature response of the reinforced concrete cross-section. Whitney stress block has to be for that ultimate, straight, uh, ultimate state where the concrete reach this parabolic shape, stress and strain relationship. So this, that stress-strain relationship was simplified by this piece of concrete stress block. It is applicable to just that. Somewhere in between, let's say, uh, if your cross-section develop this, you cannot use that Whitney stress block, right? This is more, more or less like the triangular shape distribution than the uh, rectangular stress block distribution. Okay, so in order to go that far, well, the goal for today, maybe we cannot finish up today, but we will make the code. Uh, I can show you in Excel first. We can continue in Octave, or maybe we don't need Excel. We can just go directly to Octave, and that, that gives us better, and, uh, better, better what, flexibility. 
And oh yeah, and and one more thing, if you end up with this case, this is the painful case. What if you have the T cross section? The T cross section, and you know that the neutral axis might be coming down to here. That means Whitney's stress block uh, might be applied over here, right? The, the, but the point is that at that moment you have bigger piece of block. I mean, the width of the cross section is larger there and the width is smaller there, so the extent of the Whitney stress block actually was developed from the rectangular shape beam. So you cannot just use the A value you have because the A value here was determined from the beam with normal rectangular cross section. So the distribution of the stress uh, you have was able to, uh, it is possible to be simplified using that block. But that A value come from this distribution over the constant width cross section. But when you come to the T cross section or some non, uh, well, just weird cross section, for some reason you are dealing with some girder of the bridge, just that, you cannot use Whitney stress block anymore. So what, what will be a good tool for you? Huh? Right? Quite, quite, quite frustrating. And then in, in the undergraduate, undergraduate level, as we cannot come this far to the concrete model. So we, we have been talking about the case that the block is within the flange, the top flange, but when the block exceeds okay, to the web, and then I just wonder, why on earth this case is not uh, elaborate? And, and, that, and that's because the witness race block cannot be, is not applicable to the case like this. All right, so I think uh, quite, quite a long introduction already. So uh, we will start from the material properties. All right, before we come to the cross section, we come to the material property first. So we deal with two material. First, we talk about steel, and second, we talk about concrete. I'm gonna go through steel quickly because uh, the, the range that we, we will consider for the steel is quite a uh, narrow range. Uh, you will not, you might not need to go that far to the strain hardening. If you wish, you can just put the simplified strain hardening model in there, but uh, here's it. For the steel, stress-strain relationship, I'm gonna elaborate it a lot more in, uh, in a steel, advanced steel structure course. So for steel, you load it under uniaxial tension testing, you load it, you have the linear stress strain relationship which is given by the elastic modulus. You pick up the elastic modulus from uh, the test. Uh, the E turns out to be 200 gigapascal. It does not matter how much you strain you have. For example, if you deal with very high strength uh, steel, okay, sorry, I, I just hit the limit of the page, but uh, for the high strength one, it could go up, okay, that high. Still, it exhibits the same slope, right? This graph render you the same slope, but the ductility is worse. You cannot see any yielding in a high strength steel. You go up so far, Fy is really large, but you do not have the good ductility as much as the mild steel. We use mild steel in the construction because of the ductility issue. And okay, in the, in the steel structure course, I'm gonna talk about okay, eventually something that control your stability of the structure is the E, it's not the Fy. 
So no matter how big the FY is, it, it doesn't really matter because it will fail by the stability issue which is controlled by E. So you don't look for the high strength steel for the structural steel. For a reinforced concrete structure, well, in the past we used low strength, we used my steel, the FY is about 250 MPA, and then we increase more and more and more the FY. So we go to the 30, 300 grade, uh, 400 grade, 500 grade. Generally, the nominal FY is smaller than the actual FY. So if you pick up the specimen and test in the lab, it is much higher than the nominal FY. The reason is that for a steel, if you just put a small ingredients of the, we call it impurities, like the carbon, like the nickel, copper, well, the, those people who does metallurgy, they know very good about what proportion okay to to put in but that is very small it is sometimes less than a percent okay it is a fraction of a percent it is like ppm part per million so it costs you nothing it costs them nothing they just throw in just a small amount and then they gain like a big jump in the properties of the steel so they want to make sure that their steel meet the standard so they give like the generous amount of car carbon. Okay, carbon cannot be too, too, too generous. Too much, then it is brittle. But they just give it more than enough. So if we expect 300 MPA, then you test, you get 400 or above 400, all right, in general. So that's, that's, that's the, well, the, the practice. Uh, for us, many times we don't like that. We don't like the steel that is too strong because uh, sometimes it affects the ductility and nowadays it is harder and harder to get the my steel because we recycle the steel. So once the steel is recycled, that impurities are still in there. It is difficult to remove the impurities out of the steel. So, you know, these in impurities just accumulate uh, through the re recycle process. Well, uh, you get the FY, so you can determine the Epsilon Y, or the U strain, all right? Over here, it is called U plateau. So, many times, we just simplify the model, constitutive model for steel, like just bilinear behavior. You have the elastic behavior, or uh, yeah, elastic behavior is the first part here, and then the second line, which is equals to Fy, you increase the strain, but there is no gain in the stress, right? Uh, so this is just a simplified steel model. We will look into the concrete model. For concrete model, uh, we have the a very good reference for the concrete model is uh, this paper, Banks Bank. Okay, is who scanned this? First of all, let me ask. The librarian, the copy shop, next to library scanned it. Can they do better? I do not like the. Um, yeah, okay, if, if you can suggest. So you go, uh, this is not available online, but we have a hard copies of the journal. Well, as I told you, 40 years. So this, uh, they don't digitize this version. Uh, I think this is more than 40, 50 years. 1971 okay so these two guys very good guys okay give us a very comprehensive uh, paper read through okay read through I think it 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 is a very classic paper you better go through 
and many of the information that you gonna learn from the classic paper like this. For example, if you go to like the paper talks about the Whitney stress block or the development of this stress strain relationship of concrete, you see that the F prime C come from cylinder strength, not the cube strength. Ah, right? Many times I bump up with the people in the practice and people say, that, oh, well, I don't know really which one is to be used. Maybe the cylinder strength is good for the column design and maybe the cube strength is good for the beam design. This is totally insane. If you don't read into the literatures and find out how things come up, then you just have the misunderstanding going on and then you just use it and many times it is very dangerous because you end up with much lower cylinder strength than the cube strength. The thing is that the development, the development of the concrete model based on the cylinder strength. So the F prime C that you're going to see in here are from cylinder. All right? Okay? Once you put the cube strength, then you get 25% extra. <laughs> and, and you will end up with the trouble. That's it. Okay, so look for Park and Kent. Well, if you want to find the paper Park, Kent, and then Concrete in Google Scholar, you're going to find this paper. Very good one. I, 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 I can just upload this for you in the class uh, drive. Well, just go ahead and look up for it. Ah. This is a very good information. So the concrete model has been proposed by Park and Ken, the very old one, original one. Two kinds of concrete are given, the confined concrete model and unconfined concrete model. But there are newer confined concrete model, for example, by Scott, okay, which is Priestley and Park student. Uh, this development, many are from the site from University of Canterbury, Christchurch, the New Zealand site. And you're going to hear the name Priestley, okay, Professor Priestley, Nico Priestley. Well, he passed already, but he does a lot of reinforced concrete uh, mechanics. And he does a lot of the ductility design of the structure. So uh, the concept of the reinforced concrete structure design under the earthquake, the ductility design concepts are mainly from Professor Priestley. Many uh, sort of self-centering precast concrete structure researchers come from Professor Priestley. Okay, it, it, he's 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 a great one. Okay, so the development of concrete model is ongoing after Park and Ken, of course, Scott Park Priestley, you can find the paper uh, like that, uh, or Menders, which is also Priestley student, okay? When, when we talk about the, the Menders model is very popular, okay? But people talk about Mender, okay, because the first author is Mender. But the second author is Priestley, and that's the advisor of Manda. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, uh, just just a little history about uh, the concrete model. But yeah, confine and confine. For the unconfined, for example, we deal with uh, a cross section, and the cross section, some part is enclosed by the stirrup, some part. It's not. The core inside is going to be confined. And the white zone is unconfined. The thing is that if you taste a concrete beam or some concrete column under reverse cyclic loading, you see that the unconfined concrete 
spawn. Spawn out first, and then the hoop or stirrup keeps the core from the bad degradation. So you still see the core uh, there, but the enclosure of the core just gone. Right. That that appears in actually many. I, I, I see your specimen you make for advanced reinforcement grid structure course, and that also shows that the the unconfined zone comes out. Right. So if you want to be uh, how to say, if you want to be very precise, you can make the model numerical model of the cross section using the combination of confined core and unconfined concrete on the outside. If you want to be very sloppy but conservative, that might be okay for the design. You, you, you just want to spare the error for some other procedure. So you can just go ahead with the whole cross section being unconfined concrete. Okay. If you want to be very precise, for example, if you want to do the to make the moment curvature respond for the research, go ahead with uh, Scott Park Priestley or Mander model and separate the core and the unconfined core. So you be able to catch up, to pick up, to simulate the result because once you come up with the moment curvature analysis from calculation, you will need to compare with the actual test result. So the actual test result will not be simplified, right? You want to capture, you want to match as much as possible. So that's the thing. Use the base model. So here uh, you can see that for confined concrete, once you hit the peak, the difference is that the confined concrete loses its strength very rapidly. Basically, you can think about it like almost like zero strength because it comes down to about 20% of F prime C. Whereas the confinement makes your cross section ductile. So it undergo like much larger deformation until it reach to uh, this very small strength of 20% of F prime C. Now look at this a little bit. I think this is a very good information. I didn't check myself but uh, the way you approximate, the way you calculate the concrete elastic modulus Many times in your research, if you want to get the initial, because generally the structure is overly designed, the load factor, the strain reduction factor makes your cross section huge. Even for the, the actual load, okay, you have the life load with the factor 1.6 or 1.7, but in reality you don't have even 1.0, it could be just 0 0.5, so you have a big spare your concrete might not be at the level, at the state that is quite uh, somewhere here, okay? It's not around there. It could be somewhere around here. So the point is that many times in your research, you might need to estimate the, to use the elastic modulus of concrete at the low stress level. It is not like it is not like steel. Eh? Steel has a constant E throughout the uh, elastic range, but for concrete, E keeps changing all the time. Well, for the initial slope, it does not change much, but once you go up, 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 you can see the slope changes rapidly. Many times in the research, I, I saw the student use the E from ACI. Well, the E from ACI was just used, it's just a recommendation for you 
for the design for the estimation of the deflection point of view. The tangent here and the secant there are different. Okay, so if you have the concrete model, you actually can find the slope at the initial state. And you can use this number for the better prediction. For low strain application like dynamic case, we will use the better modulus at the initial state. Ambient vibration of the structure, for example. Under the normal wind, under the ambient condition, Vibration is very small, the strain level is very small, so the component of the structure that are used to resist the lateral load, they experience just very small strain, very small stress. So you, you, you better use the elastic modulus at the initial, initial slope, the tangent initial slope at the origin. Okay, that gives you the biggest number and uh, gives you more realistic number than using ACI formula. Okay, so, so I think you need to adjust a little bit of your mindset. Many of the things in ACI, well, before you use, read the commentary. All right, the commentary on the right hand side, read it. You don't just go pick up the number, the formula on the left side and, and, and use it without knowing that what or for what purpose for uh, this uh, given formulas for. So read the commentary and then you get better understanding. You don't have to believe ACI and especially when you do research. Research, you need to use the state of the art knowledge, the state of the art information. For practicing engineer, they just need something easy enough for their everyday life. They have a thousand beam to design so they have no time to come back this far right but if you can use that state-of-the-art information for your practice well that is better than the other engineers okay. so as long as the evidence as long as you you pick up the right paper and you believe the right in the right paper and this information is just widely used and widely accepted in the in the researchers so don't worry you don't really have to just follow ACI in every footstep it is the recommendation okay all right ah now the curve here parabolic curve is controlled by uh, it is a function of epsilon c right and these two are just the straight line so it is very easy for us to to make the constitu constitutive model of that line so yes well different depends on the concrete model now we are talking about park and kent if we talk about scott park priestley it is or this you mean this one A to B yes yes for, for this Park and Ken the same but some other model they, they give some uh, yeah additional strength to uh, the stress strain relationship and the curve might be alter a little bit but that's just a different equation. Equation might be modified, but not much. It's scaled by some parameter, some coefficient. All right. But Park and Ken, which is like, yeah, 50 years ago. So basically, Park and Ken is, well, good enough for, for, for the use. But 50 years later, people need to make publications. So they just make it, refine it more and more and more and more. But I think the core of the idea, the essence of the idea, is just there. Park and Ken is good enough in, in, in general application. Well, we don't ag go against the better one, right? But, but if you look into the record of the publication or research, most the classic research, classical ones in the yeah, 40, 50 years ago, very relevant 
and later, 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 just add more complicated model to pick up little phenomena. But the essence, the core of the idea is just all those old classical researchers. Uh, they talk about the confinement. Uh, I, I, I don't think that I'm going to talk much about the confinement today yet, all right? Uh, here, uh, okay, is the distribution. So in the concrete cross section, uh, if the stress is low, you might see the linear distribution. Uh, this is the strain, but anyway, when the stress is low, the it, when the strain is low, the stress and the strain are pretty much just like the linear distribution. And then more and more nonlinearities. Uh, okay, over here. That means this point here just crosses the strain equals to point oh oh two. Okay, so you can see the stress uh, softening. Okay, uh, in this zone, uh, this is increasing, increasing, increasing until you hit the point oh oh two, and then it drops down. All right, and this is uh, well beyond the. This is the pi to f prime c. So actually, this is the concrete model we saw previously, but it is given in a cross section of the beam. So they plot it this way: uh, neutral axis is here, and okay, you you will see this later. I will I will I will show you in in a different paper. So here, Scott is coming after Ken and Park. Ken and Park is actually appear in this manuscript. This is the dissertation of Scott. And this dissertation is the fundamental of the paper uh, entitled, well, the author is like Scott, Park, and Priestley. Okay, so you can guess what's going on inside. You can look up for this. It is just available online. So Scott talks about the uh, former models, former developments, some just as simple as this one, not even look like the parabolic shape, but that is like 1964, uh, Roy and Solson. You, you, we are not doing the history class, right? Some, <laughs> some development, parabola, and then the better test and better test, okay. And then we end up with Ken and Park. All right, so the equation is given here for the parabolic portion. F C is the concrete stress, all right? It's given by F prime C. So later on, the model by others gives, if I'm not wrong, we will look at this together, but they will give like one point something in front of f prime c. So it goes up a little bit above the unconfined concrete or the older concrete model. Because once you hoop it up, the failure comes a little after. Okay. All right. And then what's in there? It is the function of epsilon c over epsilon zero. So, epsilon subscript zero is 0.002. It, uh, it is the maximum, uh, it is a strain that corresponds to the maximum concrete strength. Okay. So, uh, there is that strain. You get the F prime C and then the needle of the UTM just go in the reverse direction once it reach that number. U? I, I, I don't think we should name it. Uh, it is not the yielding. It is just the ultimate step. After that, it's still sustained, but okay. So, basically, you have just a function of these two numbers, right? Uh. And then after that, the next region 
1 uh, f prime c multiplied by 1 minus c concrete minus 0.002 okay this is what this value is epsilon c minus 0.002 right uh, so it is like you are making the graph having the origin here so you use this quantity and then you will have a slope okay so the initial one you have 1.0 multiplied by uh, minus this term so this term start from 0.002 then you get 1 minus 0 and then it decreases with this slope the slope is minus c this is the anatomy of the equation so uh, look at it c 0 0.5 epsilon 50 unconfined plus 50 h and epsilon c o okay so look at all of these together all these parameters are given this is dependent on rho s which is the amount of your confinement so they ties up between the confinement quantity with the uh, ductility of the concrete model this is the interpretation uh, 50 u well let's check 50 u okay this is 50 h okay this is the part that is increased from this is 50 u ah okay 50 u is given in this one already you can see so you have the additional ductility from the unconfined concrete so they break it into this eh? 50 u but then you add up with 50 h if you deal with totally unconfined concrete this term will not appear it will be just zero okay and then what epsilon c subscript zero is it shown in there why the after the ultimate after ultimate you mean this point yes. why, is why is it reducing uh, for concrete concrete is a brittle material and the material modem a uh, model not model <laughs> material model is uh, the more coulomb okay for the brittle one the thing is that when you compress the material up, 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 you don't get the compression failure in reality. In, in, to be precise, it is not the compression failure. Okay. The failure plane occurs in the maximum principal tensile strain. So the microstructure between the paste and the aggregate Okay, that interface generally start cracking it ten tension between that bonding is losing and then once you reach the peak after that the bond propagates the crack propagates so bonding is decreasing 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 and then it comes down so you have the decreasing stress but up to one point even though you have the disintegration of the bonding like this but if your uh, concrete is well confined it does not fall out and then it can maintain and basically even though it is not confined the shape that you see after the after the failure okay supposed to be like this so this is the maximum tensile strain okay plane that means once this cracks off you do not have any 
tension tensile strain well the maximum is just gone already so so you you don't have much more than that so under this hourglass shape you still can maintain further well I'm not saying that it's going to be going to the infinity but it is further because it will not it will not go more uh, basically right? it, 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 it reached the equilibrium state already but if you can't find okay this thing just comes out later and you some model can even like give you this uh, increase post crutching uh, capacity the of course that's why they incorporate the row S in there yeah. hmm. Hmm. depends on diameter depends on spacing uh, you got to look at the definition of rho s. Rho s is uh, actually given in detail because, okay, it's not not much in here because it is not the paper of Park and Kent. It is Scott paper. But the point is that they compute the volumetric ratio of the confinement. Okay, it's not just the cross section. It's not the area ratio it is the volumetric ratio so the volume of the core it is uh, it is a ratio of volume of the steel that is used to confine the core to the volume of the core and that turns out to be the rho s okay so it makes sense it is incorporating the spacing it also incorporate the cross section of the stirrup all right everything makes perfect sense very logical all right uh well where is the epsilon c o c zero where is it huh? it shows in mandel but but C zero there in this one where's it? Yeah, this one, this one. This it well we can we can just. Okay, later, just get the, just get the, well, concept, huh? Ultimate. Ultimate. So, wait, no, epsilon is not strain. Ultimate strain. You mean this one? Why yes, yes. yes. but do, Why don't they just level it properly? Here is a thing eh, you can learn from. I don't call it error, but eh, something is not, not perfect. Okay. I think we see. Uh huh. And this is the Menders. Okay. Epsilon C O. Okay. Yeah. C zero. Okay. Concrete. Uh -huh. Peak strain mm. in Menders model. So in particular, in the moment curvature response, you will see. In practical situation, when you design, you you limit the maximum strain to be somewhere around the 0.003, according to ACI definition of concrete failure, right? So so you have just one step. When you when you when you when you compute the nominal moment, you you just get one number. But w for here, we are trying to set up the uh, subroutine that we are going to make a function that creates the moment curvature relationship that will be useful especially when you run the specimen testing that 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 will be <laughs> a good tool okay so um now with that we can
come to here. So the mechanics of reinforced concrete cross section. under bending first thing you cast it up using equilibrium uh, this equilibrium is applicable to all beam columns beam you have zero axial force right if we talk about beam we just understand it that way For column, of course, you expect the axial force. Well, post tension post tension member. Of course you have the pre-stressing effect you have axial force not equal to zero I don't care having axial force or not once we create this subroutine we'll be able to analyze the cross-section under different scenario for example if you want to apply tension in the cross section it is possible if you have the compression like in the column it is also possible you can compare between a the same the identical cross section under different axial load and you can see the ductility how it changed so if it is the beam without axial force, you have one ductility. If your beam turns out to be the column of which the cross section is the same, you get the different ductility. Right? So it is universal. Second, constitutive relationship. For we have the steel bilinear. To matter of fact, we can put more elegant model of the material. Just, just that. If tomorrow there is a newer model you want to incorporate, you just use the same idea. You have different equation that describe the material, but the algorithm that we use to construct this is actually the same concrete well Pratt and Ken Amanda the last one kinematics in this case we will use the plane section remains plane so we have the linear distribution of your strain over the cross section so let's see what's going to happen in your cross section
moment and curvature relationship first of all you load your cross section under bending this is for a given axial load okay the curve that we will produce is associated with one axial load only because otherwise you cannot you you need the the volume plot not the space uh, not the plane plot like this so you load your cross section under the bending under the moment you come up boop. this is the uncrack cross section Uncrack cross section I cross okay so concrete still resist still carry the tension you are not exceeding the tensile strength of concrete so tensile strength of concrete generally Rule of thumb number 0 0.1 F prime C. Okay, approximately. So you will develop the curve by having one point and then the second point here. This second point is associated with the tensile strain 0 0.1. So you can we will go down to the detail of each step one by one okay but it could be pretty much like this and here this tensile strain is uh, less than the cracking tensile strain of concrete so your eye gross is taken from the whole cross section so you have the steel and then you use the modular ratio to make the cross section looks like this uh, you learn in undergraduates when you talk about when you learn about the composite cross section huh? this is from the modular ratio okay you get to this point already now your cross section crack when it crack it opens up the curvature so the curvature you had over here increases how the curvature increase is it increased like this or is it increased like that the the, the second one right so increase so concrete no longer carry tension your neutral axis shift up and then that increase the strain in the steel so steel carry over the load transfer from concrete and then you have the balance of the tension and the compression in the top part okay so for this step you have some phenomena like this you have more deformation which is the curvature but you do not have more capacity uh, more strength or more resistance the moment resistance is still the same it is just it just changed the resisting mechanism from concrete tension to PL steel tension okay after this so we call this one the cracking point after this it goes up
Okay. So you come to the point where your steel start yielding. You might end up with the case where the concrete crush. That's also possible if you put too much steel. Concrete crush and then it drops. But if your cross section is a good one, you'll be seeing the ductile behavior like that. So that depends on how you design your cross section, but you can learn from this moment curvature diagram. And then steel yielding, you can continue, right? So after the yielding, we can get all these points from our moment curvature analysis. If you want to pick up the steel uh, behavior after the yielding, you pick up the strain hardening and you pick up the uh, ultimate condition, that's also possible to be captured by this curve. Yes? Uh, the, the line that the concrete fiber is, top fiber of the concrete fiber. Cracking? Cracking that means... Uh, that means uh, Bottom part under tension, the part under tension. No, I mean, uh, you need? The, the yes, no. Yeah, yeah, this, this is compression control failure. That means the top fiber Yeah, crutch, yeah, concrete crutching. Okay, so, uh, first of all, okay, yeah, we, we're gonna have the behavior pre cracking and then. Once it is after crack, we will have the different model, I mean different calculation, and that's going to go up all the way. Uh, and we also can pick up the value of the MN, nominal strength of the cross section. <coughs> that is the number you use in the design. So you can see where okay, is, your, is the state of the material you have. You, MY is not going to be the same. It does not need to be the same as MN. Why? Because steel could yield up to 5,000 microstrain. Right? The ductile uh, the ductile failure definition uh, which is given by ACI especially for the ACI 19 the newest one you need to make the steel goes up to 5500 micro strain or 0 0.0055 it used to be just 005 uh, so you get additional to be able to be eligible for 0 0.9 fee. This fee is a re strength reduction factor, not the curvature, all right? Don't, don't mix up. Okay, so the thing is that it is the different point, the MY and MN. So MN could be somewhere around there, which is the higher. So you can see where it's actually that one. Maybe first thing, we start from the easiest thing. We will produce the Excel spreadsheet to get the MN, All right? which is just one point. And then after that, we will produce the octave M5 to produce the whole moment curvature relationship. But now, what we are going to do in Excel, you're gonna love it. First of all, you'll be able to uh, analyze and get the capacity of the cross section, which is not the rectangular shape cross section. I will make it possible for you to do triangular shape, T shape, whatever circular shape cross section. You feel good about that. Second, 
in the RC design theory concepts you use the compression steel you have to guesstimate if it is yielding or not and if you design and you come back and check oh it's not the same as you guess then you need to revise no such thing in here now we move to Excel over here now think about the strategy the strategy that we are going to use is that we will compute the concrete strain at a given point right at a I will discretize the RC cross section into many layers discretization will be carried out along the depth so I will put a lot of discretization at the compression zone I may not put as much in, uh, in tension because under tension I will say that it is zero below the neutral axis it will be zero so it does not affect the calculation so uh, well as this is in Excel then you can just do it in a limited way I'm, I'm not making the visual basic code so if we just want to make spreadsheet like this H is the total height of the cross section okay what unit meter okay we, we go with SI then All right this is the height uh, what maybe F prime C in what unit M P A P was supposed to be the the upper case, right? I don't know why. In in Excel it always uh correct my M P A into M and lowercase P every time and then I got to come back like that. Uh what else? The uh, Epsilon C zero symbol epsilon it should be somewhere no I never put this ah okay epsilon it's what pi o o two two thousand micro strain ah. okay fine I get make it bigger okay now let's do it layer number so got to layer one two three that, that you just copy more if you like if you want 50 layers or if you want 100 fine your your life <laughs> layer number width the second thing width I add this in the unit will be meter maybe okay I, I, I thickness T H K N okay thickness make it meter in unit what else we have layer number we have width we have thickness that means if you want uh, I, 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 I think maybe not do not call it thickness I'm just thinking about the architecture of the code of the spreadsheet to make life easy. I'm going to need the the top level and bottom level of the layer such that I'm going to draw you this thing. So 
so if this is one layer you have in this layer ah, easier to draw in in this layer you have the strain at the top and strain at the bottom of the layer two different value you can do you can compute the total force in one layer there are many ways one way if you think that your discretization is very fine the discretization of layer is very fine you just average it up and make it like a rectangular shape okay and then you get the centroid of the rectangular shape which is in the middle of layer and that's it you take that distance for the moment calculation that's one thing the second if you don't want to be sloppy this can be broken down into uh, can you see okay so one rectangular uh, one tapezoidal shape can be broken down into two pieces of triangular shape these two pieces of triangular shapes you can find no, So, this one, you can get the precise centroid, which is one third from the top, one third of the layer thickness. Another one, you can get its centroid, which is also one third from the bottom. This one, if you have the bad discretization of the layer, then this capture better. But still, if you are going to use this for your research purpose just make the triangular distribution it does not take you much more time but the strategy is that first of all we need to get the C the Z coordinates of the top and the bottom once we have that we can we can compute the strain from the plane section remains plane assumption so we get corresponding strain at two levels and that corresponding strain will be used for concrete stress calculation okay and that will be used further for the stress block uh, force integration so okay we have width thickness yeah you can manually input the thickness sometimes I just put the height there and then I just divide the height by the number like 50 that's also possible but you cannot vary the this what what to do okay I just remove it okay so um, I will say that set top then you can do you can make it flexible in other ways but we just focus on how to make it work first okay if you want to make it fancy up to you you have time so the air time is expensive but here width for the width you can pre assign the width for example if you have the I girder this one can do or the girder that has like or the shape like the triangular shape you can use this one initially we can use the width like what 0 0.2 meters okay so it is uniform or if you think this is not that great then okay 0 0.5 
Ah, this turns out to be the T cross section. So Z at the top. Um, well, which one you want to start? I think maybe at the top we set it up for like zero. H is zero point six meter. So this is equal to this add up with zero point six meter that we need to lock cell. Divide by we have fifty layers. This is the top. And then for the bottom, this is equal to um this add up with the slice thickness. And again, we have to lock the cell. All right, so you end up with 0.6. A little. Okay. What else? What is the next strain? At the top. Of course, you will have strain at the bottom. Strain, you have no unit. How do we calculate the strain? I will need to uh, strain will be calculated from two numbers first curvature second the location of the neutral axis just just these two yeah. and uh, so you can fix one thing and vary another you have the strain strain is pretty much like a slope but the slope can be this this line with a given slope can shift up or down that depends on the neutral axis what is the condition that we are going to calculate we are doing all of this in order to find the nominal capacity nominal moment capacity so we say that the concrete maximum concrete strain reaches 0 0.003 according to the definition by ACI all right steel strain we have no idea we're gonna let the steel the strain in steel be the variable okay so strain in the steel will vary such that the total the total the equilibrium of the total force axial force uh, is achieved basically for this case here the axial force will be specified to be zero and then you need to balance the compression and the tension in the steel okay so you vary the tensile strain in the steel once you vary this okay the whole the whole uh, profile of the strain is going to move right but you fix the top which is 0.003 already ah okay so this number is fixed Then let's take a look at the D. 
distribution here okay so distribution here will tie up with the z and the curvature information uh, I will put the steel over here side by side here is the information about steel so this one can account for how many six layer of steel or ten layer of steel generally you don't have that many diameter quantity uh, well before we come that Z okay keep in mind that Z is refer from the top start from zero and then come down okay and diameter or not diameter area just go ahead with the area square meter C is in meter unit and then F Y M P A that's gonna be correct <laughs> I don't understand if S is also MPA so we have location of steel what this is 60 centimeters in depth maybe we put two layers of steel 60 centimeters you have um, start from 0 uh, 0 0.04 0 0.04 it over here you do not have anything I just leave the zero like that because the area I will make it zero maybe I make it square centimeter and then I adjust the unit in the calculation later one digit Okay, not that. And then uh, 0 0.056, 0 0.052. If this is not convenient for you, then you change the unit to centimeter. Your choice. So the area, uh, what might this be? Uh, height is 60, the width is 50 and 50 and 20. Okay, we can put, uh, if it is a DB20, DB20, okay, four, uh, 3.1 square, 6.1, Nine, okay, just go with the, uh, easy number 9 square centimeters if why well 400 just in case if you want to put steel with different FY well the thing in here it is the nonlinear uh, system of equation we cannot just write up the equation and solve it uh, just one shot this this is nonlinear steel is yielding right so it has the model concrete is also nonlinear so over here it's just purely ah then you want the curvature all right you want the curvature so curvature is going to be the quantity that you vary you just know that this curvature controls everything controls the strain 
which is the epsilon s steel strain control the concrete strain and then it brings the right number brings everything into the equilibrium so curvature is the strain okay and then divide by the height so if we have the height we can calculate this strain by Just put some number in there. If the curvature is 0.001, you have this is equal to this one minus the curvature multiplied by the distance from the top. Okay. Wait, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Okay. So this curvature distance from the top. So it is in the length. Yeah, curvature is one over length scale. You multiply by the z, which is in the length scale, you end up with the strain, right? So uh, 0.01. Oh, sorry, I didn't lock the formula. Yeah, okay. Now you can see. So as you adjust the curvature, here you see the neutral axis. The chain of the curvature from one side to another side is your neutral axis. And and and, and well, basically I accept that I am quite sloppy here because I I don't care much about the side. I will take care of the side uh, by myself. Okay, so I'm not like consistent with negative positive sign thing. Pi O two the higher the curvature the the higher the neutral axis the closer to the top. Pi O O eight and uh, okay. Alright. Now we can calculate the strain at the bottom here which is this one okay minus hey 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 wait a minute then oh okay i think this has to be correct this has to be locked as well huh? okay yeah we get the strain at the top and then we get the curvature multiplied by distance from the top okay we shouldn't minus uh, subtract it from the the nearby cell it has to be referred to this one always okay and the same thing this minus curvature multiplied by set bottom I need to lock the cell so the E9 will not be adjusted okay All right nice of these are the formula just this one that we do not touch Unless the new definition of concrete crutching strain is given. But 
the spreadsheet here is just dedicated for the MN calculation. Just that. Below curvature is the axial force. This one you need to prescribe. It might be in Newton. Kilo Newton, mega Newton. Okay, I, I keep it Newton like that. F prime C, uh, what? 35 MPA. So we can also compute the strain in steel using this minus curvature multiply by this and then I need to lock F9 I need to lock I2 oh well 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 eh why isn't it Point five two is negative already. Why isn't it? Hmm. Why? Point five. Oh, okay. It should be point five two and pi 5 6 okay yeah. yeah good let me pick this up first <laughs> before here minus strain denotes the tensile strain the positive one denotes compression for steel it is super easy for us so we can set up the constitutive relationship for you if the strain multiply by 200 gigapascal 200 1 2 3 megapascal is greater than well, let's say it less than or equal to Fy. Then we keep this number. If not, we will pick this number. So that means, okay, this yields. We don't care about this? Fine. Ah, so the steel below, they are not yielding under this curvature. Under this curvature. This is not the balanced curvature. Okay, but, but here it shows that the value down there is uh, not yielded. And then we can find the uh, hmm? first, first two layers. This is yielding. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't worry about this. This curvature is just assumed curvature. Right? This is not the realistic curvature yet. We have not run the goal seeking to get the. Number, but but uh, if I put this curvature, if I put like 0 0.02, then okay, you get huh? Okay, now we get another bug. We need to use the absolute. Okay. 
we need to use the sign of what strain and then multiply by okay yeah that's gonna work yeah, let's see okay there you go so uh, here is yielding we need to use the sign 0.025 yeah it changes and then f subscript s which is in what you need then kilonewton maybe kilonewton seems to be yeah seems to make sense so we have the mega pascal unit multiplied by the area okay the area is square centimeter so i need to multiply by 0001 this is 1 uh, 10 to the minus 4 okay so now i get the square meter multiply by mpa then i need to give it like 1000 to drop it from m to k and then i have 10 uh, I can clean this up so it is just this form here okay 36 kilo Newton now we have the force uh, this force will multiply by the moment arm So I make it moment, um, and the unit will be in kilo newton meter. We can refer to the top layer. Uh, I mean, when you calculate the moment, you have uh, the moment arm. Um, Okay, so we, we take the force multiply by the distance C kilonewton meter come out like this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that depends on the location. Okay. And uh, that's all for the steel format cell water. Pop. What we need to use to cast the equilibrium of axial force is the FS, right? So this is first of all sum of fs we will add the sum of fc in a bit ah now we finish the easy part we come to the concrete so it will be the more difficult part Merge cell and then I insert the symbol. Now I need stress. Where is this? Okay. So this is stress at the top. What will be the unit? KPA. Okay, top stress that depends on your concrete model, right? 
So if we use here, okay, you change, you can change, all right? But for MN, for the design, it does not hurt. This one is quite conservative. So let me check concrete model. Okay, so we break it into two different zones. If your concrete strain is which one first which one first which one first if it is less than zero zero that means tension okay but if it is less than or equal to epsilon here then you have the f prime c multiplied by Two times epsilon current epsilon epsilon c divide by this one minus in the bracket this term. square close the bracket and then if your concrete strain exceed the maximum the ultimate strain we will pick up we will use the concrete model over there so the z is 0 0.5 divided by unconfined okay the epsilon 50 h which come from the hoop reinforcement or confinement you can add it later uh, just a more elaborate so 0 0.5 divided by epsilon 50 u okay where is it 50 u it's not given in this one then look I got to 0 0.5 over epsilon 50 u plus epsilon c 0 which is pi o o 2 now let me fill this out first f prime c Multiply by one minus I'm gonna add the Z value in there later. Um current strain minus this close the bracket okay now we get the compressive strain of concrete uh, the C value is not added in yet right so the C value is 0 0.5 divide by epsilon 50 u what can anybody get the epsilon that value? 
โอเคเอเปซิลอนฟิฟตี้ยูเอสทรีพลัสโอโอทูเอฟพรามซีโอเวอร์เอฟพรามซีมินัสวันเทาสันไอซัสเปกต์แดดเดอะยูนิตไม่ต์บีอินเดอะคุณบีในคลิปในอังกฤษยูนิต so f p r i m c minus 1000 let me do it this way conversion yeah google hmm? <laughs> convert MPA um, no uh, K uh, keep inch KPI to MPA no no English unit one for what what is the unit for PSI okay yeah. PSI to MPA yeah I so one PSI is point o o This is fifty. This is epsilon subscript C zero, right? This is epsilon subscript fifty U, which is unconfined concrete strain at fifty percent strength, and it is, and it is. Equal to three plus. Oh, I got to convert MPA to PSI then, because the, the formula is in PSI. Okay, so three plus one forty-five point zero three eight. This is the conversion. Multiply by F prime C. And then the whole thing is divided by the F prime C, which is the 145.038, multiplied by the MPA F prime C minus 1,000. Mm, is it three plus this? Strain is too big. I I don't believe that. F prime C minus one thousand. What is the unit? F prime C is expressed in pound per square inch, which is psi. Right. So if I convert from my MPA, which is thirty five MPA. Thirty-five multiplied by one forty. One forty-five. It is five thousand. It's not bad, right? Uh 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 ah. Point oh oh. Yeah. Okay. Zero point oh oh two times F prime C and then divide by F prime C. Okay. Yeah. Now we get epsilon fifty u. We need the z value, which is zero point five. I add it. Z value is equals to zero point five. Divide by 
เอฟซีลอนฟิฟตี้ยูวีดอนเฮฟเอฟซีลอนฟิฟตี้เอชโอเค We don't incorporate the hoop. This is unconfined concrete. p e l minus epsilon c zero. Okay, so this is your c value. Then in this, okay, I have to multiply by c, and then I got to lock the cell. Hey, that's insane! Oh, wrong place. Okay. Huh? Yeah. What's wrong? B for F10. No, no, this one. The yeah. R2. Mm -hmm. Another thing s missing. Thank you. Yeah, is it right? No, 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 no. This is a square term. Eh? Square term. Do not. Yes. It does not have two. Inside of what? F10 is the epsilon. C divide by epsilon zero square. It's okay. All right. Ah, uh, okay. Ah. Oh. Okay. Now we have stress. Ah, uh, and then it is automatic. So the part where you have tensile. This is corresponding to okay. Same for this one here, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, everything was locked, so I think I can copy this. Uh, huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just copy and then it moves like that. Okay. There it is. What next? We need to find force. And I need kilonewton unit again. I think I'm gonna need more space because, uh huh. So force will be determined from the upper triangular 0.5 multiplied by the width, which is here, multiplied by The stress and the thickness. So the thickness is well. Right now the thickness is h over 50, right? I put it in the bracket. Okay. So the thickness is there. The width is there, 0.5 is there. The next thing is my stress, kPa. So, this is the force contribution in the top triangle. Check again what might be the issue. 0.5 is okay. C10. Is in the meter unit, okay? The slice thickness is this divided by 50 in meter unit, okay? 
and then KPA should end up with kilonewton unit. Okay. Oh, compared to steel, steel seems to be like very aggressive. Ah. Square centimeters. Is there anything in steel? Square centimeters. And then mega pascal. Eh, kilo pascal or mega pascal here. F prime C. It is in the mega pascal, right? Because F prime C, huh? MPA. So, I need to give this like a thousand, right? So, okay. Then this one. Let me just copy and correct it. This has to be here. Edge does not move and stress. Okay. Huh. Then, what's next? Moment. Moment concrete. And it is kilonewton meter. So, two contribution. The first contribution is the force here. All right. Multiply by the Z top. Wait, 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 wait. Multiply by C top. Add up with the slice thickness. Which is actually refer from the top. It is just one third of the slice thickness. Right, it is a triangle, so this is the upper triangle. One third of slice thickness add up with the C coordinate at the top. This is a force from the top, whereas the bottom one has its own location. need to multiply by two huh? two thirds of the slice thickness is a centroid of the bottom one add up bang you get this mm -hmm. and there you go so uh, a little cosmetic Done here. There. Axial force should be sum of the steel and sum of concrete. Missing opening, closing. Okay. Huh? And what else? You need the moment, which is the sum of concrete moment plus the sum of steel moment.
kilo newton meter. Now, how to use it? This one you don't need to touch. Okay. Axial force needs your attention. You need to go seek until we get zero. Or if you have other axial force present get axial force like in the column, you will specify that axial force. The thing is that the uh when when we talk about the other case when you have axial force the moment was taken at the centroid in general uh, if you have zero axial force no matter where you take the moment you get the same uh -huh, value but when you have axial force applied then uh, it depends on where you take the moment if you take the moment about the neutral axis or if you take the moment about the application force application location that will matter so you can do some sort of calculation to adjust the location where you take moment in this later but the concept is up to here you don't need anything more so um, then I do the what data what if analysis go seek I need to change this to value zero by changing what curvature okay